I think we've come now to our first time word. I think now that we're entering the great tribulation period, and I believe that this is the thing that characterizes it. Now, let me very briefly mention to you what I have on my chart that might be helpful. You and I are living in the age of the church or the age of the Holy Spirit, as some like to speak of it. And in the world today, the Bible divides mankind into three groups. Paul says, give none offense, neither to the Jew or the Gentile or the church of God. Those are the three groups in the world. Now, he's calling out a people to his name out of both Israel and the Gentiles. And one of these days, that group will be taken out of the world. Then the great tribulation begins. And I think this is what you have here now in verse 9, the beginning actually of the great tribulation period. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, who's he talking about? The church? No. He's talking about the nation Israel. This is anti-Semitism on a worldwide scale. And I'd like to inject this at this point because it's important. And I trust it might be important for Christians today. My friend, as long as the church, the true church, is in the world, you could never have worldwide anti-Semitism because the church will resist that. No real believer in the Lord Jesus could hate the Jew. That's an impossibility. Now, I think liberalism has given a false front to these people and in the final analysis would finally turn against them. But long as the church is in the world, the true church, why, there will not be worldwide anti-Semitism. But when the true church is removed, I think it will break out worldwide. Verse 10, "...and then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many." Now, we are not to pay attention to false prophets. Peter says, "...as there were false prophets among the people," that is, Israel, there will be false teachers among you. We are to beware of false teachers. And here it's a warning against false prophets, which the nation Israel was to beware of. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, that's a principle, of course, that you could apply that to today, as there are many principles here. A great many people today, because of the way the world is going, I met a preacher. I'd been in school with him. And he had joined everything. He'd become a liberal. He drinks his cocktails, smokes his cigarettes, and he lives just like the world. He told me, no use fighting it. He said, McGee, you don't fight City Hall, you join it. Well, I fight City Hall in that sense, by the way. I'm not about to join it. You see, because of the iniquity that's around him, he was telling me about in his church, how much of this had gotten in his church. He's not going to fight it. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It'll be more true in that day, of course. Now, verse 13 is supposed to be a startling verse. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, he that shall endure unto the end. Well, now somebody says, you see, you got to endure. Yeah, but who endures? Well, when I read the book of Revelation, I find out that he stopped the whole forces of nature and of evil and even of good. And he said, we're going to seal so many. Who is it that's going to endure to the end? Those that he sealed at the beginning, of course. And he says, my sheep, regardless of the period or regardless of the sheep, they're going to make it through to the end. He said that when he starts out with a hundred sheep, he always comes through. Now, who is it that endures to the end? Those that are his will be recognized because they'll endure to the end. I think, again, we've got a great principle there. When somebody says to me today, I knew so-and-so, he was very active in the church, he was a deacon in the church, and now he's gone into sin. Is he a child of God? I can't answer it. I don't know what to say because I don't know. Really, I don't know. We just have to wait. I tell them that the pigs will eventually get to the pig pen and the prodigal sons will all get back to the father's house eventually. It is confusing 
to find a son in the pig pen, and sometimes you find a little pig up in the father's house. And Peter says the sow that was washed has returned to a wallowing again. The pig did get up there. One of the little pigs went up with the prodigal son, got a nice little pink ribbon around his neck, and he had his teeth washed with pepsodent. And I want to tell you, he looked very much like a real believer, but he wasn't, you see. He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You just have to wait. Sometimes a sheep gets in the mud. Sometimes a son gets into the pig pen. But he's going to get out, friends. Why? Because he has a wonderful shepherd. A sheep is safe because we've got a wonderful shepherd, friends. And that's what he's saying here.